You're listening to KYST 89.3, The Bowl. The Bowl. The Bowl. And now time for South Tucson Youth Football. Simulcast on AM 1400, The Bowl. And on South Tucson Local Access Channel 22. Good evening. It is Friday evening. We are celebrating the end of a long week. At least if you're me, it's been a long week. And uh, it is time for some South Tucson youth football. My name is Ryan Hughes. We are here in South Tucson on KYST. You just heard the nice licks, the, uh, uh, the bumper. And we've got two big games for you this evening starting a little earlier for you that way you can kind of enjoy the rest of your night and pass out if you're me because it's been a hell of a week but uh we're gonna enjoy we're gonna have some fun we've got pablo's roadside tacos in the opening game of this double header currently ranked number six overall in all of south tucson sixth ranked pablo's roadside tacos they are one of six teams at six and one overall in the season they take on the creamy surprise, the defending champions, currently sitting at four and three, but they are a threat in this league, especially in the gluttony league, which has been a bit of a jumble. Taking a look at the standings right now, uh, the gluttony league, Pablo's and the creamy surprise currently sit first and second. Pablo's very much in control, a win for Pablos would all but control their destiny. They are 4-0 and in conference. Every other team in their division, 2-2. Two and two. It's pretty much even spread throughout the division aside from Pablos. They stand alone. And the Creamy Surprise currently 4-3, and 2-2 two and two in conference. Not the same magical year they had last season. Let's go ahead and look at the lineups for these two teams. Uh, brought, uh, Star Watch brought to you by Star Watch. It's where Randy and Jason star the Star Brothers. Watch old episodes of Star Search. It's Star Watch, what the stars watch. Starting with the creamy surprise, that is Q Beagles, their star quarterback, who led them to that South Tucson Youth Football Championship last season. In the middle, that is outside linebacker Krug Jugman. And the creamy surprise did not have their third player get a picture taken that is Doe Decahedron Lewis wide receiver and on the other side of this football is Pablo's Roadside Tacos on the far left that is their outside linebacker and team captain collateral damage uh, in the middle is their quarterback Gary Indiana and not pictured another glory boy wide receiver Jabroni Robbins Jabroni Robbins so go ahead and let us know who you're picking? I just realized I had the uh, the the Discord call still deafened and uh, muted because Will's joined me in the studio. I'm in the studio. I mean, yeah, kind of. It's a it's a it's a you know we're in a radio studio. We're okay. We're in a we're in a shack that they kind of dangerously hovered over the stadium like they do every week. I mean, look, we we don't talk about it because we don't want an order day or order day aim day incident happening. If case there's an orm stay. <laughs> Wow, we don't want right. we don't want to die like because no because we neglect because they negligently hung us up there like that kid from Notre Dame who died. Let's put it that way because I can't really do. The I know pig I got the late. pig Latin too. I well oh, I I butchered the pig Latin. That's what the problem was. I mean I I got it. Okay, let's see if anyone else gets it. Uh, he gets it. The little guy over there gets it. Um, all right. Well, let's go right down to the Muni and see how this shakes out. And you are looking live at Municipal Field number 101 in downtown South Tucson, Arizona for the opening half of our doubleheader. It is the Creamy Surprise taking on... What? Nah, nah, that's fine. Taking on Pablo's Roadside Tacos, the defending champs taking on the number six ranked team in all of South Tucson in week eight action. Pablo's in the white jerseys, red pants, yellow helmets. Kicking left to right on your radio dial to the Creamy Surprise, the home team. And that's Dodecahedron Lewis with an 18-yard return there in the brown helmets and jerseys and white pants. Yes. 
Yeah, that's about it. Uh, no, nah, this is just going to be kind of a chill hang anyway, so I was like, eh, whatever. Hey, did your Rumble thing ever work out? Like, were you able to watch most of them? Wait, what? Oh, Oh, no, I gave that up like a couple weeks ago. I got you. No, I, I totally understand. I don't, I don't think I've watched a full... I, I The only full one I've watched so far this year is 2003, and, it, and I haven't really like, thought about it. Where did, we, uh, where did we rank 2003 last year? Uh, High end or low end? I can't remember anything about any rumble. I will... The I, will uh, I just want to know if it was a good one or a bad one. I'll just post them in the chat. Uh, you can. I can post the whole list so that so, like people... Like, yeah. It'll be easier that way. So what happened? Ask about, so explanation. Just, last year, Will uh, led the charge of ranking all the rumbles. And I watched all of them. He watched them all, and I think it was Except kind of a 1998. random draw. Right? 1998, I fell asleep halfway through and just kind of like half-assed it. <laughs> well, there you go. And uh, I, he, like, he's like, that's why it's probably right in the middle. <laughs> And for those watching on, on YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and just roll through it really quickly. He put 08 on top, 04 right behind that, and 92 behind that, all respectable ones, 01 and 2011, rounding out the top five. The worst being 88, which, of course, is a bit of controversy because you got to wonder if it... We had, we had a debate of whether or not it counts. It's a terrible match. And, and I think it is terrible and all that no, good stuff, yeah. I, I never ever want to watch that Rumble ever no, again. No, it's it's I'll, it's absolutely wretched. It really is. I, but the question is, can, does it count as a Rumble because it's twenty? It's not really. It's like it's, the pilot. You can you can kind of almost give it a pass feet. for being terrible. Yeah, I can watch the the fifteen Rumble again, but I can I don't think I can I ever want to or will ever watch the eighty eight yeah. Rumble. What I like is that the fifteen one is dead last if you don't include eighty eight. That's a huge catch, by the way. All the way down, and a flag, so everybody take a nice drink. It's a Friday night. Um, 15 is just wretched without even going it. Not even with the O, oh, because Roman won thing. It's just paced so poorly. Well, uh, it's not. I don't even know if it's paced so the poorly. The ending is paced is terribly. just a litany of bad decision after. Like, it's bad decision after bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Um. We were there live. Yeah. You, I, uh, Fitz, and our friend Bronson. Now, even uh, we, I would say that the the crowd overreacted to this because they were just being. It's not. It's not as bad as as, as it. Like. It's bad. It's the worst rumble. That's not like that. That people had to pay money for. Mm -hmm. But it's not as bad as as. as it, it gets a somewhat of a bad rap, and I think because it does, it inflates like rumbles like 2016, which were just fine, but like people had such a bad taste of the 05, the 15 rumble in their mouths that they kind of overrate it a bit in my mind. It's a fine rumble, but it's it, it's nothing really all that special other than right. the stipulation. Yeah, and, and and like I mean, my only my only problem with it was just that like the the whole final sequence that involved that's a touchdown for the creamy surprise. By the way, they are putting the number six team on upset alert early with a opening score two minutes in. Fred Greenwood, the running back, I've never heard that name on that team before. Interesting. Um, it's that whole Kane and the Big Show sequence, which just sucks the life out of literally. Everything. Yeah, like, that's yeah, the yeah, worst th decision. Yeah, there's bad decisions. Problem. Whatever, there's bad decisions. But that is the sequence that just literally makes everything. It's a slog. It's slow, which is why I talked about pacing being bad. It, it, it nothing happens, and then they. The, to well, the point where bringing the Rock episode. out doesn't even help. Like it's not even like a oh well, the Rock's trying to give Roman the rub. It's like no, the Rock came out. But the whole match was already just... The match was already just exhausting. I mean, I can say that I got to see The Rock live. That's true. And, like, and for my generation of wrestling fans, that means that, like, you either have to go to a very specific set of Raws or a WrestleMania to, to normally get that experience. Right. So that was, that was nice, but... <laughs> it didn't really matter because what the, the problem was first of all they eliminated Daniel Bryan way too quickly. Uh, he didn't have to win. I think I think that's a misnomer. Now but at he, the time, 
you, now at the time we didn't know about all the damn injuries. That's true. I would say even at the time, like I don't. I, I think it's a bit of an overreaction to, to to say that he needed to win in order for that crowd not to be riotous. I think they were regardless. They, they were so anti Roman Reigns that it wasn't going to matter. But like. Yeah, there was Brian winning out. over, say, like Dolph Ziggler, who had just come off of beating the authority, or Dean Ambrose, or, you know, or those are the two big baby faces that probably Ooh, could have won people. Interception, the by the way. But the issue wasn't that, that Daniel Bryan didn't win, per se, it was that he got eliminated in like 15 minutes. And it was in like the first, it was at the end of the first half of the It was a Rumble. pretty innocuous, it just happening. Absolute, yeah. It, it was energetic and fun up until that point. Like, I was there live. It, Bubba Ray Dudley came out. And everybody was, like, doing the what's up thing. Because, uh, you know, Bubba's get, racist. Get and doesn't matter. Just, oh, yeah. All, all Bubba needs is just a black guy. He just has designated black guy to do all the spots with. It was... They should just team him, they should team him with Gold Dust as just... As team give us any black guy. It wasn't, like... Di- Bray Wyatt tosses him. And he didn't really get heat. He just sucked all the life out of the crowd once he did it. And nobody cared anymore. It wasn't yeah. it completely backfired. Yeah, it and was. From that point on, from that point on, everybody knew Roman Reigns was winning. If they didn't already, they they knew for sure. But they kept kind of holding out hope. So it peaked a little bit when like Ambrose came out or Ziggler came out. And here lies the second problem. Those guys stuck around till the end, but they were eliminated not by Roman Reigns. They were eliminated by, by the, the monolith that is Kane and the Big Show. The monolith. I like it. Will never, ever die. Yeah, no, that was – that, and honestly, I think that was a bigger sin than anything else is just making the entire match uninteresting when those two dudes just literally – Rusev should everyone. have been tossed in you did, yeah, you did, you did, yeah, but you didn't get, you didn't get, like, you didn't get the 2014 moment of just Roman wrecking shit. Yeah, I felt it was a, that was, that was the biggest misstep. Because once Kane and Big Show started clearing the ring out and leaving themselves with Roman, the entire crowd just went to a rage. Because it was, because now it's not even, like, really caring about Rusev because they knew Rusev wasn't going to win. Um, they knew what that spot was going to set up for. Um, they kind of held out hope, but it just ended up being like, oh my fucking god. We now have Kane and the Big Show double teaming the only other guy in the Rumble match, a guy that, that 90% of this crowd does not like. Yeah. Now, now you said Rusev dumped Kane and the Big Show, or who dumped Kane and the Big Show then? Automatic first down. Roman did. Okay. And then they came back and beat him up. So then The Rock has to come out and beat up Kane and the Big Show. Right. And then after that, at this point, everybody just wants it to be over. They're so sick of it. They just wanted to end. Please, for the love of God, end. Then Rusev comes back. <laughs> and Rusev's almost about to win. And the crowd get up a little bit for that, but of course, they everybody kind of knew where it was going. Yeah. Roman ducks the, like, Savat kick or whatever, spear, toss him out, wins sure. the rubble head. I, I think, well, the, I think what it was crazy. is you didn't, you didn't give anyone... You could have easily turned the crowd onto Roman in that match by giving them something to be invested in him. Yeah, they, they were going to hate it because whatever. And then some were always going to. But I think you didn't give him enough in the match like they did in 2014 where he was just this unstoppable fucking force. You know what I mean? I don't think it would have mattered that much. Uh, you're, you're, but and, and, and you're it, right. But it, would, but it, it wouldn't would have. have but from, from, you have to, you're right in that in that. At that time, it would not have mattered. I think we'd look at, back on it better. Like, I mean, we're not, you know, for example, people booed the shit out of John Cena when he made the surprise return. But we looked back and said, man, that was one of the great fucking moments. Because we, oh, we looked at it objectively. Movie. Like, it was, and, and you, okay. and yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't when bad. When was the last time you watched the 08 Rumble, Brian? Say again? When was the last time you watched the 08 Rumble? Is it not that uh, 08 is no, the No, because I, I think you're 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 misremembering exactly how it happened. It wasn't that they booed John Cena; they went nuts for and the. Then realized, the, the oh wait, we're turn. supposed to boo this guy. And then they realized there was Cena, and they're like, "Oh fuck this, boo!" <laughs> yeah, 
see, that's but the thing. Also, the I can't, I can't. Uh, aside from the obvious ones, I can't put years with matches that well. Like you can't say, oh well, the O3. I'm like, I don't fucking remember anything about the O3. I don't know what the O3 one was. I assume it was Benoit. O4 is Benoit. Okay, what's O3? O3 is, o, O3 is um, here comes the pain, Mr. Brock Lesnar. Right. Point to Kane with a 28-yard reception. Pablo's down two touchdowns in. Where did I rank that one? Did that make my top. Okay, that was eighth out of whatever. Yeah. So it's it's a, it's in the top thirty percent of rumbles. It's a good rumble. Now, I here's, here's, a, here's a proposal, and and this can be done maybe even like with the with the fun help of because we had talked about wanting to do it again, and have an actual like scorecard, like Iron Chef style scorecard, and not to make it too complicated, but what about doing it? What about doing it after the fact, like starting with the most recent one? And then saying, okay, like using the most, like not rating the most recent one, not scoring the most recent one, but watching the most recent one. And saying, okay, that kind of sets up, not to make the joke, but that sets a bar. That is the bar. Um, and then do the scoring of everything else, random draw in order, based on, you know, with that kind of as your barometer. That's your most recent thing. You're thinking, okay, the most recent one was either shit, it was great. It was middle of the road, it was acceptable, it was fun, it was not fun, but it was very good, you know. I, st I, st I get what you're saying, but if, if, if it's really, really good, it's going to def Like, if the 2018 women's or men's rumble ends up being, like, really, really good, then it's going to, like, if we set that as a, like, as a bar, then, like, there's going to be a lot of things that fall below the bar that really shouldn't. Sure. Well, I mean, like, but maybe, maybe kind of like, a, it, maybe it's kind of like a palate cleanser to, to rank the rest of them. I personally like a one to ten scoring system with different criteria. Like you, like you put a one to, you have like four four categories, and you give it a one to ten on each of these things. And then you and you add them up all together. Or like you, surprise, yeah. creativity. Yeah. Um, yeah. One 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 of our friends who I, I won't mention on here because he's uh he's he's involved in the, in in, 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 in yeah. He's, invo he's involved in the field where, like, you know, confidentiality. I'm soon going to be involved in the field like that. Bro. Are you going to not be on streams anymore? I'll be on streams under a different name. <laughs> okay, so we'll all have to just, like... We'll, and we'll, a voice we'll, we'll, men in black, we'll men in black mind wipe everyone who listens and yes. watches to ever know no, your name. No, no, it's, it's not a big deal, but if, if I get hired by a team, oh, I'll be gone. <laughs> That's fair. And I'll I be mean, gone. I, I'll be gone I am social, crossing my fingers if that on. happens because I know that's what you want. Yeah, I'll be gone on social. I mean, I'll still talk and, and have calls and whatnot every now and then, but I will be like probably busy and on top of that, off of. But the, this person always likes to joke about me making things incredibly complex. This would be the yeah. most complex undertaking for like ranking a match that I can think of. Yeah. But I don't think it's I don't think it's incredibly difficult for the no, rumble. I don't, and I don't think so. I think we were, I think that was more of an of an inst of an in excuse to give you shit. Yeah, it was um, it was to give me shit, but like if you did that for every match, then yeah, that would be ridiculous. No, but for I the mean like rumble, no, no, you watch a rumble. It's not that hard. You watch a rumble, you have five categories. Yes. You score them and then we record them and that's it. And yeah, like, but it's you, like okay, but the rumble, yeah, that's, it's a 1 to 10 in creativity, a 1 to 10 in match. enjoyment. Defense. A one to ten, and, you know, we 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 decide what our categories are and how we define them. That's it, that's all it is. It's really e like I don't know, maybe maybe because like that's like coming up with like metrics and shit like that is a lot of stuff I do in my daily job. Like that doesn't seem that hard to yeah, me. Yeah, started define, to come up a lot with what I do in my yeah, daily job. Yeah, you define job. what you define what a good rumble should have, and you you narrow that down to like four or five like basically adjectives. Creativity or yeah, creative would be one. The you know, only the only original. thing I want to say, Brian, because you cut me off like three sorry. times before I said this, is that I think that for for like a generalized like a standard wrestling match, doing criteria like that is dumb and kind of like defeats the the purpose because ma a lot of matches are different, mm -hmm. like they have different aspects of it. But in general, a rumble is is I wouldn't say it's standard, but like it's. It, it generally falls under a, a, a few set of circumstances. I watched all of them. Yeah. Like within the past year, it generally falls under like a criteria of four to five things that make it that make it good or bad. Right. And you can you can isolate those those four or five things generally on a year in year out basis and get like a definition of, of if a rumble is good or bad. Sure. And, and like, sorry. 
And the reason that I wanted to do it is because last year I just watched them one by one and then like... Like I started off with like 2002. Yeah. And then it was just like, was this better than 2002? By the time I got like the 15 to 20, like Rumbles Deep, it was really, really hard to... Yeah. I don't feel like that's a very like accurate ranking as it might end in like, it's recency biased. I'm because... not going to lie. I'd love to get random... I'd get, I'd love to get like other people's votes on this too, you know? Oh, I got a lot of, I got a lot of different uh, opinions on it. A lot of people thought I ranked 07 too low. Yeah. Uh, 07... They thought I ranked 07 too low and 11 too high, and 12 above 07 people thought was insane. But I explained that 07, I cannot stand the finish of the 2007 Royal Rumble. Remind me, please. The, the 2007 Royal Rumble is a lot of fun up until the finish for me. Because the finish is Shawn Michaels and, and, and The Undertaker right. basically having an eight-minute match at the end of the Rumble. And then, like... After that match, they spend about 30 seconds trying to throw each other and out. That's and that's a big sticking point that I know you always bring up, and I like that I point. I hated it. I hate it so much. And the, and the basic comparison I make is the, is the 2012 Rumble, where Sheamus and Chris Jericho do the same thing, but they work their, their finishing segment, their finishing 8 to 10-minute segment, mm -hmm. around not, like, hitting moves per se, but trying to get each other over the top rope. Right. Like, working on the apron it's much more of a of a competition at the end based on the objective of the match that's one of those things that's one of those things and i'm so glad you brought that up when you did um and, and just to explain to anyone listening who may not be as familiar with it the the the, the idea that will is talking about and, and now that once you learn it once you think about it you'll watch old ones and it'll piss you off like you won't notice it until now is that when it's down to two the guys left in it suddenly forget the rules of the match and they just focus on having a match and they start doing their oh look it's just the two of us or you know whatever and they suddenly stop trying to win the match as eagerly as they were before when they yeah, were just, a when, lot when, of, when half a lot the time they were stalling by just holding guys on the ropes yeah and a, and a lot of the time this flaw ends up being evident when it's down to the final three, and it's two heels working on a baby face. It happens a lot in the early rumbles with Hogan, yeah. where like you'll have two heels left, and they'll just basically have like get a heat segment on Hogan hitting moves on him in the ring. Yep. And then Hogan makes his comeback and tosses them out. It's like, oh hey, just, we're having they, fun. We're getting off, beat up Hogan here. It, it's 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 not as bad as the 07 rumble because it's two pe It's both people forgetting. Like that, this is a match where you're trying to throw the other top rope, and it feels like masturbatory. Yeah. It feels like they're just kind of showing off, and like, and people will always look back and be like, "Oh, it's an illusion to the to the matches Michaels and Undertaker have." And don't get me wrong, I love that those 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 WrestleMania matches. They're some of my favorite matches of all time. Yeah. But it's just it, in in the context of the Rumble, it's so bad based on what I I want to get out of the Rumble, which is. Still, something that that resembles a pro wrestling match where people are trying to follow a particular objective. Yeah. But I do give, but I do give grace to a couple things. The '93 Rumble involves one of the absolute dumbest eliminations oh, I've ever seen, and I, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we'll have to get. Uh, yeah. Um, I I, I kind of want to see what y'all think as well. Oh, you back? Cool. Yeah, I'm. I'm back. No, no worries, no worries. I was did just did you through. explain it, or I could? I'll just explain no, it. No, no, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna throw something in, in the meantime in case you're gonna be gone for a significant period of time. Go ahead. Um, uh, now there's two people you could be thinking of, and I can't remember which one. I'm assuming it's Savage. Randy Savage and Yokozuna are the final two. Yep. <laughs> Randy Savage is being down Yokozuna. The crowd's going nuts, and like Randy Savage goes up to the top rope and he hits the elbow drop. He finally gets Yokozuna down, goes to the top rope, hits the elbow drop. <laughs> Pins him, and it's and the reason he pins him is because it's a setup for Yokozuna pressing him from his like fr from like from like his back, like he's covering him. Yeah. So Yokozuna can press him from that position over the top rope to the floor. It's an impressive spot, but it's so for it's so phony and formulaic, and I give it a pass though because I just love the spot, and I and there's a lot of things out of that '93 Rumble that towards the end are really exciting. Like Bob Backlund making it forever and ever in a day. Yeah. 
and the yeah, crowd that's like, like that's like one of those things that's just like what and then you go the okay crowd cool just, like an insane amount of respect for this for this 45 year old man who half the crowd doesn't remember existed right yeah and they just suddenly get they suddenly get behind him and it's great i like i honestly love and see this is where if one of the you know i'm just kind of like spitballing ideas for categories to rate you know story i think would be a category and in, in that yes. case i really think I think, and, and it depends. I can't remember how they justify another it, another very strong. Story. But I like. Hold on, hold on. I, I think the way I like the way I like they. Ju- I don't know if they justify it this way, but what I love about that savage spot is you can, you know, if you needed to argue, what well, it's a fucking rumble. Why did he? Why did he try to cover him? You know, that was the first moment Yokozuna has been knocked off his feet. Like, mm-hmm. the crowd goes delirious for that. You have to imagine that, like, at that point, you just Reversal go, foul. oh, Ruffing fuck, that happened. Defense. And, like, your mind just goes numb for a second. You think, cover him, because that's what your fight-or-flight instinct in a wrestling ring is to do, Still that you forget down. that you're in the Royal Rumble. And I feel like if they sold it as that, and I don't remember if they did or not, that's so, that to me, that's that brilliant and heartbreaking thing of it. it they could they could have, and it would have helped, like, I know they didn't. I know they did. Yes, they it would have been. helped. Um, but I, I still give it a pass just because I think the spot is 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 so visually impressive that I can almost give them a pass for how, for how like phony it is to set it up. Sure. Because the only because literally the only reason he goes for a cover is to set up this spot. So it 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 it, it, it gets rid of like it, people don't act like they're in the match because they need to set up a spot for later on in the match. And so. But another great, but it's a great story. Yeah. And, and another great story rumble is the 09 rumble, which is the legacy rumble. Okay. Where, where it's basically the legacy like Orton sl- uh, um, surviving until legacy gets in, and then the three of them just kind of team up and fend off everybody else. Like, well, the, well mainly Rhodes and DiBiase fend off everybody else for, from getting to Orton. Sure. And then it gets down to the end where it's like, and there's some there's some fun moments in between there too. I think that's the that's the year where Santino gets eliminated in one second. Yeah. And like, and it's 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 just impressive that they were able to pull it off so fluidly. Yeah. Because <laughs> he basically slides in the ring and immediately gets knocked it over the top. Needed to be that, yeah. And like, and they tried to do that spot again, and it's failed because 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 of it's what not an you, easy spot what can you do at this point yeah you you, you should have just like left it with the two and then like yeah because like you risk like burning it out on one thing i think they've tried it with titus o'neill and titus o'neill was just too big and and not fast enough to yeah really anyway i'm gonna go ahead and pay a quick bill so let's go ahead and find out who our sponsor of the day is our sponsor spotlight and uh you can join me in this if you'd like uh, t- today it's going to be the never-ending solo drum circle Uh, You can be one of many circle jerks at the never-ending solo drum circle. If you have a djembe, a bongo, a conga, or you just thought I made up at least one of those words. Um, Or if you have a djembe. um, A djembe mubongo. Because who will sex your djembe tonight? Um, (laughs) You can go down and bring whatever sort of thing you want to bang on. And you can bang on it till the cows come home, because that's how we tell that. Because it's on, a, it's on, a, it's on a dairy farm, and they take the cows out and we squat, and then when they come back, then we have to leave. That's the um, that's that's the never-ending drum circle, never-ending solo drum circle. Slap some skin. And we're back with the second half. The number six team in all of South Tucson. The- Pablo's Roadside Tacos down 21 to 10 to the creamy surprise, the defending champions in South Tucson. Uh, I, I, I'm glad that some people are starting to pop up in the chat and let us know what their, what some of their favorite uh, moments are. I kind of want to hear favorite, like, because I, I want to hear forgotten great moments. I want to hear about forgotten great Rumble moments. Um, uh, Punk's promos between entrants. I could not care less about the Core Nexus faction face-off, other than the fact that it was an excuse to give us a 40-man rumble, which we should have from now on anyway. Um, what's Kofi going to do for his annual rumble spot? Um, 
God, it's gonna involve pancakes, isn't it? It probably will. <laughs> it's gonna be some goofy as shit, but it's also gonna be kind of athletic. Um, I hope Woods gets a good run in it. Not just because I have him in the Rumble Pool, but because like Sant I feel like they've been giving him the ball a little bit more as a wrestler. Is Santino almost winning the 2011 Royal Rumble a forgotten moment now? At this point, yeah. Um, Maven's That's one limit. of the great Rumble moments that I don't think a lot of people like talk about that That's much. That's a heartstring tugger. Yes, it's it's so well executed, and they basically should have never tried to do it again. They they they, they should they didn't try to do it the same way, but they shouldn't have tried to do it again in, in fifteen. Um, they try? Oh, with Rusev, yeah, yeah. It's because everybody knew it was coming. Nobody yeah. knew, really knew it was coming like when they did. That was the first time they tried something like that. They somehow got you to believe that in the fan, the, the, the live, actually going to do it. With live fans, it's different because they can see the guy. Yeah. Like in the front, it'll, it'll circulate throughout the crowd. But like on camera, I did not see it coming. I don't. I think a lot of people didn't see it coming. Yeah, it was brilliant. Um, like I mean, we got. I think. I think we were on Skype watching that. And some of us were like, uh, Santino hadn't been eliminated, guys. Santino hasn't been eliminated. Um, and we it started to catch on. And, like, you could see people in the front row because it was opposite Hard... It was, uh, he was on the... He was obscured by the ring because he was on the side that hard cam is... He's on the hard cam side at ring side. So he's, like... You could see the dudes on hard cam kind of front row kind of pointing down saying he's still in it. He's still in it. In the And the next year they did it. The, the next time they did it, they kind I will say this about the 2015 Rumble. In order to hide the spot away from 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 the from the viewing audience, they put they had Rusev get like go into the middle rope or whatever, and he got pulled out towards like where the timekeeper's table is. Right. So that there, so the hard cam didn't catch any fans like saying, "Oh, he's over here." Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put a rule: no more, no more bashing the 2015 Rumble. We accept that it's terrible. It's just like, it, we somehow made we somehow made a fun we somehow took a fun a fun uh, quote forgotten Rumble moment and just brought it back to the worst Rumble. I'm sorry. I know. I, 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 it's, it's not. It's, I'm not looking for an apology. I'm just saying. Can we not bring? Can we not talk about it anymore? Because it's more fun things to talk about. And I really think both these both the ones on Sunday are gonna be a fucking blast. Okay, I wasn't a huge fan of this Rumble, but Brett's performance in the 94 Rumble is one of the best of all time. His entrance is so good because they tease it with the no entrance earlier. They just it's, go, they just go, that so... was Brett. They just go, that was Brett. Next Luger's really bad in it, and they do, hey. the, they do something in it that I, that I haven't seen since, and thank God I haven't, where they cut backstage in the middle of the Rumble to like, I can't remember who it was. It was like Crush or somebody backstage getting beat down by like the like by the by the Japanese guys. I think it was Teneru and um No, they were beating down Luger. Oh that's right. Earlier that's... in the show. But I wanna I remember there was something like where like Ray Rougeau was following Crush or something. It was the stupidest thing. I but and that stuff kind of over. Well, that, that would have set up because Crush was feuding with Savage at the time, so that would have been involving that in some way. The Diesel stuff is fun, but it doesn't hold up as well as it as it does. It, as it, it doesn't hold up as well because so many other people have been the dominant big guy in the Rumble since him. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, like, people have done was, it better. It, it was great for the time, and it's still good today and fun to watch, but like, it. You you've seen other performances with guys like Kane in 2001 or Roman in 2014, and yeah. you know. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I don't Rikishi think Maven. I don't think Maven. Go ahead. Rikishi in 2000 yeah. even did it, just as good if not okay. better than. Dude. So it just doesn't. The so Brett's really the standout okay. like moment from that Rumble, and I don't think a lot of people talk about it. Uh, I don't call Maven's dropkick to the Undertaker a forgotten moment. I think that's kind of like always goes there. Uh, I'm going to go with Mr. Priceless saying the hardcore section in 2001 is super fun, is really fun, and trash, but it's the fucking best. Like, we just get one after the other. Steve Blackman's there, Raven's in it, and Kane shows up, and it's just like, yeah, this is fucking stupid. Let's do this. I actually like the moment that follows immediately after that section more, which is the return of the honky tonk. 
And he gets guitar, doesn't he? He gets El He Kabob. gets guitar by Kane, and oh, it's shit. the funniest thing. And Q Beagles with a touchdown for the Creamy Surprise. They were within four where Pablo's roadside tacos, but the Creamy Surprise just edged it out even more. It's getting close to the end of the third. Uh, I'm going to say forgotten moment that is just beautiful. And it's brilliant because it made you question if it was supposed to happen. Is Sean's I need to win this elimination. Where he just grabs for the rope and it's not there. Yeah, I hated that when I, I first I loved saw it. it. See, I, I get you but love I, it or hate it. In retro, in, But in later years, I've appreciated it more and more and kind of felt it to be either serendipitous or really well executed, depending on how you look at it. I, I look at the guys who are involved in it, and I feel like it has to have been just, it went well, it went perfectly for them. You know what I mean? I feel like that was the plan, and it just worked. It's so clumsy, though, like, it, it involved Sean Michaels that it, I, I always have doubt that it was actually planned to happen that way. But, I, but there's still doubt because but, of how but, well they handled it. I feel like you don't see elimination, no, and, and I completely disagree, like 100 and more, so much percent that I'm actually coming around and agreeing with you. Um, no, I completely disagree with this because I feel like that's, that's like, he, you know, all the eliminations are, they're very clearly scripted because you're not just trying to chuck a dude over the top rope because that'll actually injure or paralyze them or something. So like you have to do these little, except in, oh except God, in 1988 when sure, guys, sure, sure, sure. Like I was saying, you have to just like do it with a little bit of flair and safety for the person. But like, he's onto the apron, and at this point you just knock him off, and he's there. Like it's like it's a friggin' no mercy game. Um, and so you can get away with this like, like scramble. He's he comes in with this desperation gimmick. Like that's his story of the Rumbles. It's, he's super desperate to get this Undertaker match that he's got to win it. And he's just scrambling, and he's so close to getting it, and everyone's believing he's going to do it. And then just one tiny mistake happens, and he's on the he's on the apron. And he makes that one tiny mistake, and he's grabbing because like so many times in the past, Sean's been the one hanging onto the apron. He's been the one saving himself from these from these eliminations, and it just doesn't happen. He just lets it slip that one time, and it just looked. It looked real. It looked like it wasn't supposed to happen. It looked like that was not supposed to happen. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I'm not saying it wasn't great. I remember hating it at the time because I thought it was a botch, and like I wasn't like a I was I was like a 19 year old wrestling fan. I was like, oh, Shawn Michaels just botched that elimination spot. <laughs> like I was I was a big asshole about it. Um, but looking back in retrospect, I just still think it was it was a botch because it's Shawn Michaels and like even with like the most like and and, and and it's the rare occasion where where a botch is better than like it actually like going smoothly in my mind but I still believe it's a botch because it's Shawn Michaels the most graceful professional wrestler who's ever lived I think like, it's a purposeful botch yeah <laughs> no you're telling you're telling me you're telling, no, you're telling me that, that the most graceful technical wrestler couldn't make it look like he can't fucking do something. I know. That's why there's doubt in my mind. Like, if anybody could work, could work, uh, uh, could work a, a, a botched elimination, it'd be Shawn Michaels. So there's always that doubt creeping in my mind. That's what makes it great. I've seen less remember, talented. I've seen less talented wrestlers do more in that nature. That I think that I think that's an easy thing for him to do. Because it wasn't even like he had to like actively do things poorly. He had to just like totally miss a spot. And be like, ah hell, ah beans. Oh, come on, I don't think I don't think the Big Show is a lesser professional wrestler because he had because Big Show in 04, like that elimination is nuts. Like big like in Big Show in 04 was a menace. Like, Remind like, me of his like, elimination in 04. Was that? It was Benoit like front chancering him over the top rope, like on he was like on his head, That's right. like bridging on his neck going over the top and it was insane and then and big show has one of my favorite rumble animations ever where kurt ankle kurt angle has him in the ankle lock and big show who's not like 2000 like 17 big show where he's 380 pounds big show's probably pushing 500 pounds at this point okay still fat, fat as shit like big show this big motherfucker gets up like to like to do the the, the, the typical like ankle lock counter 
he leans himself over the top rope with, with, the, with Kurt still having the ankle lock, flips over the top rope, holding on the top, and catapults Angle over with him and hangs on. It's one of the most insane things that has ever happened in a Rumble, and I don't think a lot of people remember it. <clears throat> All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up another awesome, um, a really fun moment, and it's a very small moment. We talk about 92 and how great it is. Um, the early part of that rumble where it's literally a conga line of people who got problems with Ric Flair. Yes. And out comes Piper and he just goes, oh, like his face just going, oh. That plus the three heels just healing it off against each other. It was what? It was it was Jake, it was Flair, and who was the third? It was Piper. Right? It was Piper, Jake, and Flair all like eye poking and doing dirty shit to each other. I, okay, uh, yes. Because Piper was a babyface, but he'd always do that anyway. A more accurate way to put it was that three dirty fighters were all playing dirty with each other. Right, but it, and one was Piper. I forgot, that, I forgot that one was Piper who was not a heel at the time. But he'd always yeah, play I, dirty. Piper, well, Piper's in this in, is in the face versus face program with Brett, though, so he's going to play heel at Mania. But, like, as a baby face. Like, he's he's working heel yeah. as a baby yep. face. I, I, I understand. So I get I get what you're saying. Um, I'm just looking up and down these rumbles. There's usually something in each rumble that I really liked, um, barring like the really really bad ones. Like I want to hear y'all in the chat. Tell me what you think are some really fun. Uh, Kyantai, maybe it's just because we love it and it's so brutal and it's just so uh, mean. But I feel like we can't forget the Kyantai one. The two cool mini dance off in 2000s. All right. It, it just ends with them being with with the with the two s small dudes getting uh, dumped. Um, what is 2000 like? is an interesting rumble because I think that it plays better with the television that comes after it than it does as a standalone. Yeah, but, I honestly don't like 2000, but I know that I'm in the minority with that one. No, 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 I did not like 2000 either. As a standalone match, it's not a good, it's not a very good rumble. It's yeah. fine. Like, as a, it's, it's like I'm, as like a way to spend like 60 minutes watching a wrestling match, it's fine. It passes by quickly like a rumble normally would, but it's not a good rumble. Yeah. You know, um, you know why 2000 always, uh, and I, I, mean, we, I know we had this discussion when we watched it, but 2000 already like starts at a low point for me, and, I, and this is this is just a, this is a bad reason, but I'm gonna stick to it anyway. And it's why the Cena Return one is great, more so. 2000 and the Cena Return. What's your Cena's Return? Cena Return is 08. Okay, so those are both MSG. Which cannot have the long ramp, which I immediately think of when I think of the Rumble. And I need me that long ramp. Um, and then I... Um, Chai Guy, that's a great one. I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, I, so I know that when you're in MSG, you can't do the long ramp because you don't have the space. But I feel like 2000 did it the worst way possible. It's like dudes were suddenly at ringside like the minute the buzzer hit. It's like, oh, okay, that's not, no, stop it. It's like you might as well just have them in a pen at ringside and just release one every 90 seconds. I think 08 is a lot better than, than, than 2000 in that regard. They set it up better. I, I think they set it up better, and I think a, a very iconic moment is Cena coming out of the door at 30, yeah. looking around the crowd. Who are like lit, who are on top of him because of the way the, yep. the sets up? It, it, it's more based on, on on presentation and gravitas and like yeah. and like build like it within the match rather than like they did they've done anything different than they did in two thousand in terms of setup. Yeah, if you're not gonna Physical have the ramp, setup. I like having the I like having hard cam face the entrance. Yeah, well, they did them those, those rumbles. I like I think. Yeah. They, but yeah, I, okay, that that is, that is pretty nice. I, I like um, Chai Guy bringing up that running gags of the Rumble. Shelton always being eliminated by HPK in three straight years, or Cody always getting eliminated by Gold Dust. I will say this, and this is the one that Will's gonna know. Anytime you have Tito Santana and Rick Martel in a Rumble, they will go after each other. Yeah, they're gonna fight. They okay. will always fight. It was you could set your goddamn watch to it, and I loved it. And I kind of wish a couple years ago they were two secret like entries. But I feel like no one would appreciate it as much as we all hope they would. 
It's not going to um, be like Piper and Snooka, which was created that one year, and that was super cool. That but was like, 08. But that wasn't based... Yeah, that wasn't based in any sort of, like, Rumble lore. You know what I mean? Like, that wasn't a Rumble running gag they brought back 20 years later. Santana and Martel always going after each other was fantastic. How about it's Martel just... being the original, like, Iron Man dude? Yeah, that, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's a good thing to do for him, you know? It's a good thing to just throw him in at. It was him and it was, it was him, Valentine and DiBiase who were the original like Iron Men in my mind. I think Martel right. probably set the record relative to all of them. Yeah, he the, set the early record. Those are the three people I think in that class of the early like the first three Rumbles that 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 had that had mo that had Rumble matches where they lasted you know fifty forty five fifty minutes a piece. Yeah. Um, and all and all three people that you would that, that you normally think of, of people that are capable of going for a long time, especially Craig the Hammer Valentine. <laughs> um, let me look at some other rumbles. Uh, Ninety six. Um, the Vader stuff is interesting. Um, I think that was just an overall like really fun rumble, but nothing really stands out about it. Right. It's just, it just it, some rumbles. It's you know some rumbles. It's not difficult. It's just like I had fun watching this rumble. It flowed well. It, the pacing was fine. I hate, to go, I hate like to go negative. That. Can we get rid of the trope? Demolition starting one and two is so great because it's so early on in the rumble history that it blows people's damn minds. Like if it happened now, you go oh, okay. But back then, it's like oh shit. Yeah, that one. That one doesn't hold up as much nowadays because I feel like we've seen partners fight each other in like every rumble since that point. Yeah. But that that was the first one, and it was one and two. They have no choice; they have to fight. I'm also tired of the spot of one and two start the match, three gets dumped immediately. That's like so planned at this point. Yeah, uh, I think in some rumbles it's fun. Um, one that one that rings a bell is um, Tom Brandy. Two thousand well, let's get Tom Brandy. Two thousand six is when Simon Dean comes out and like Triple H and Rey Mysterio started it off, and like he's bringing out all his like gimmicks, like the fucking powder, the 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 pull up bar, the 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 um the 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 resistance bands, okay. and like Triple H and Rey Mysterio look at him like he's from fucking Mars. And <laughs> just throw them out immediately. Right. <laughs> and I think that's fun. I, I do I do agree that it gets overdone, but sometimes in, with earlier ones, you know, like I'm more it, forgiving when it's a comedy spot like that. Like that's that's a, you just named probably the best version of that. Yeah. Of number three getting dumped immediately. I feel like it's such an easy trope to throw out there that you're like, oh, alright, okay. So, so the final score of this game, which we have not talked about at all, which I am super okay with, and we're going to have more Rumble Talk in a second, is 35-23, to 23, the creamy surprise. Take out a ranked team in Pablo's Roadside Tacos. Creamy surprise improved to 5-3. and three. Pablo's down to 6-2. and two. They suffer their first conference loss. And we're going to go off the air in just a second because we're going to split it up for YouTube. We're not going to go off the air. But uh, you guys sit tight. We're going to be back with more Rumble Talks. We're going to be back with more uh, games coming up. Our next game coming up is going to be uh, Sam and Sons Gazebo Repair taking on Busted Rubber Auto and Tire Repair. Am I going to do that one? No, actually, I'm going to switch it up. Sorry. I'm going to do Twin Towers Construction versus Big Paul's Mexican Lose Car Wash. We're going to go with that one. Twin Towers Construction. They are a team ranked fifth in all of South Tucson. We'll be back in just a bit. Until then, so long, Arizona!